ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਟੁਡੇਜ਼ ਐਡੀਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਆਮ ਹਰਪੀ ਸਿੰਘ ਤੂਰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਆਪ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਪਿਆਰ ਭਰੀ ਸਤਿ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਅਕਾਲ ਨਮਸਕਾਰ ਅਦਾਬ ਐਂਡ ਸ਼ਲੋਮ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਆਈ ਗੋ ਇਨਟੂ ਟੁਡੇਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ देयर ਆਰ ਟੂ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਮ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਟਾਕ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਿਟਸਬਰਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਹੋਈ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਔਰ ਜੂਜ਼ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਮਰਡਰ ਕੀਤੇ ਗਏ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ देयर ਇਜ਼ ਸਮਥਿੰਗ ਵਿਚ ਇਜ਼ ਹੋਰਿਬਲ ਹੋਰਿਬਲ ਬਟ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਈਵਨ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਦੀ ਇਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਦਾ ਕਰੰਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ atmosphere create kita ja raha sega see it was such ke all of sudden we have bombs going out to the people who are opposed to him and who openly defy him and then we have the shooting or uh, the guy who did the shooting he openly admitted that he is following uh, the white supremacist uh, group and uh, you know and that is exactly what happened in wisconsin in 2012 and 6 ਸੈਕਸ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਿੰਗ ਇਹ ਗਿਆਨੀ ਹੀ ਵਾਸ ਸ਼ਟ ਡਾਊਨ ਔਰ ਉੱਥੇ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਗੋਲੀ ਚਲਾ ਕੇ ਤਾਂ ਓਕਰੇਜ ਘਟਨਾ ਹੋਈ ਸੀਗੀ ਸੀ ਬਟ ਦ ਡਿਫਰੈਂਸ ਇਜ਼ ਵੈਨ ਇਟ ਹੈਪਨ ਇਨ ਓਕਰੇਜ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਓਬਾਮਾ ਵਾਸ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਹੀ ਆਰਡਰਡ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਸਿਕਸ ਪੀਪਲ ਡਾਈਡ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਸੋ ਹੀ ਆਰਡਰਡ ਟੂ ਫਲਾਈ ਦਾ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਫਲੈਗ ਔਨ ਵਾਈਟ ਹਾਊਸ ਐਟ ਹੈਪ ਮੈਸਟ for 6 days but here now we had it only for one day that's it and that also even though his own son in law is happened to be a jew but i don't know what's going on in his mind what he thinks what if there is anything going on there is no idea nobody really can figure it out and if there are any consistent policies i don't know i have no idea and i'm not going to talk about that either and the other thing is ke ਸਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਪਈ 1984 ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਟੁਡੇਸ ਡੇਸ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਡ ਇਨ ਇਟ ਕਿ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿਦਾਂ ਦੰਗੇ ਫਸਾਦ ਹੋਏ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਚੈਨਲਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਸੁਣੀ ਹੋਣੀ ਹੈ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਕੁਝ ਸੁਣਿਆ ਹੋਣਾ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਵੀ ਐਸੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਉਹ ਸੋਚ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਪਈ ਜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਆ ਔਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਆਪਣੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਪੈਸੇ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਦੇ ਖਾਤਰ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਮੁਖੌਟਾ ਆ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਲਾਇਆ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਆ ਸੰਤ ਪਿੰਡਰਾਂ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਬਹੁਤ ਯੂਜ਼ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਔਰ ਸੰਤ ਪਿੰਡਰਾਂ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਗੱਲ ਕਹੀ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਜਿਸ ਬੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਜ਼ਮੀਰ ਮਾਰ ਲਈ ਉਹਨੇ ਸਭ ਕੁਝ ਮਾਰ ਲਿਆ ਔਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਮੇਰਾ ਖਿਆਲ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬਾਕੀ ਦਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਤਾ ਪਰ ਮੈਂ ਖੁਦ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਕੁਝ ਇੱਕ ਬੰਦੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੀ ਜ਼ਮੀਰ ਮਾਰੀ ਹੋਈ ਆ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਪਿੰਡਰਾ ਸੰਤ ਪਿੰਡਰਾਂ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਤਾਂ ਕਈ ਕੁਝ ਕਰਦੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ uh i really wish i could do something about it but jo bhi kar sakde hege ha i try to do it uh besides that uh yeah because today i finally got somebody to talk about a very important issue uh, because this issue which i was just touching about where we still haven't gotten any justice we'll talk about it that why we have not gotten any justice in my next program when i do it which is not going to be following friday but friday after that but today i have with me dr george cyrus he happens to be cardiologist and electrophysiology specialist from mount sinai and uh, one of the best cardiologist and he every time we talk to him every time i talk to him he always tells me uh, harpreet any punjabi guy send to me because i owe and i always tell him that no you don't owe us anything So first let me introduce him to you and then we're going to talk about it. Thanks Dr. Cyrus. Thank you so much uh, Harpreet for inviting me here tonight. It's a real pleasure and honor and I do believe that they still owe a lot of stuff to the Punjabi people because I, do, I don't think I would be sitting here and I wouldn't have my career possible without the people's uh, help from the Punjab the Punjabi people help. Oh uh, uh, that's a debate I don't want to go into that. Yeah that's what you think but I always say that uh, it's all what it was meant to be that way so that's how it happened we were it was meant to be that we come across this way and we become friends for life long and that's what it is and for me that is something which i cherish and i will cherish for the rest of my life that i have a good doctor who is a friend of mine in case something happens to me he will take care of me <laughs> i
let's start with the heart issue because then uh, or whatever is for comes first and then the heart issue comes up let me uh, start from the beginning so the reason that i said that i owe you guys the punjabi people is because of the fact that when i first immigrated here to america punjabis uh, helped me and accommodated me in the beginning of my career they provided the food the shelter to me now um, that gave me the wonderful opportunity to come in a very very close uh, touch with the culture of the Punjabis. So I do know exactly how, uh, what they eat and uh, what, they, what, how, what they drink. So I do know exactly how Punjabis nutrition is and what their background is genetically. So the issue here is multifaceted. So number one is that people that from, from Punjab, they may have a certain genetic background that can predispose them to to, gen to like cardiovascular disease and or diabetes, which can be exacerbated by their lifestyle and their nutrition. So you already have a pool of genes. That's why you have a lot of a big prevalence of diabetes in the Punjabi community. But because of the fact that a lot of Punjabis, particularly the elderly generations, are very sedentary, they do not exercise and they eat the dal, the, uh, the pokora, the, 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 I still remember all this. Oh, good yeah, foods, of course, you remember foods. everything. You, you probably remember the food more the than chapati. what I do, you know. Yeah, the roti, chapati. The you know? yeah. So, yeah. this is like carbohydrate rich meals that they consume, particularly at the end of the day after a, a very hard day's work. So, they come back at home, usually about 7 8 o'clock, they sit and they consume a very rich meal. And then they go to bed immediately. So and they drink. And they drink. Don't don't leave that out because that's a very important part also. And they drink a we lot. We don't need to be shy about it, you know. And they drink a lot. Now the drinking issue is because uh, uh, consuming alcohol can make the diabetes control very very difficult. Because somebody who is diabetic, if they drink alcohol, their diabetes control becomes very very poor. The sugar levels can be very very high. And even if you take insulin or if you consume any diabetic medications, they may not be as effective as compared to somebody who does not drink. So you have a poor genetic baseline. You eat the ghee along with the roti and the pakoras and the parontas. And cetera, fried pakoras with chutney and everything. Yep. Yeah. And then you consume alcohol. So these are several, these are multiple hits at the same time on somebody that has, is predisposed to have disease. So Punjabis have noticed they develop diabetes at a very young age. The problem is that they may not even be aware of it. So I have noticed a lot of elderly Punjabis where I used to live in Richmond Hill across the temple, but they were not sure if they had diabetes or not. They were not going for regular visits to their doctors. So even if they had high blood pressure or uncontrolled diabetes, they were not aware of it. Therefore, the disease progressed in s for over several years unnoticed, and then suddenly they end up with a bypass. I'm not saying it's too late after you get a bypass to change your life or after a stent, but as Hippocrates used to say, it's better to prevent than fix things. Yeah, I mean, why even to re let that situation reach there where you have to end up in the hospital getting uh, bypass and surgeries and then all of a sudden from one extreme you go to the other extreme. That's exactly right. And the problem with diabetes is not that diabetes will kill you instantaneously. So if you have a heart attack, some people may die right there and then. Diabetes is a chronic progressive disease that can debilitate people. I've seen a lot of Punjabis with lost eyesight, with limbs, with limb amputations or on dialysis. These are uh, outcomes from poor diabetic control. So what I would like to tell you tonight and what I want you to remember is have annual checkups of, like, every year. Make sure you follow up with your primary care physicians. And if you have diabetes or hypertension, don't say, ah, it's okay, no problem, don't worry about it, it's gonna be okay. It will not be okay. So I want you to be aware of the issues that can happen because you can become a burden to your children even, 
or to your spouses? It is, it is a very interesting uh, thing. We are, go we are going to talk about, we are going to take a small break here, and then we're going to talk about that how, once you get sick, mm -hmm. that how it can be a, a burden in a way to the family, Certainly. that the progress of your family is where you want to, them to see that it slows down. So let's take a break, and after the break, we will be right back. Welcome back to American Vision, and uh, we're talking about uh, the diet, the habits, and the issues which uh, we have within our Punjabi community uh, in particular, and generally in South Asia, we have these issues. Uh, but how we can make few changes, the lifestyle changes, which may actually help us not to go under the knife like they say in medical terminology. So that's what we're going to talk about, that how to avoid going under the knife. Yeah. So prevention is very important. Prevention is, is more important than treatment, according to Hippocrates, the father of medicine from Greece from 3,000 years ago. So how did you prevent? It's, it's difficult to change the lifestyle of certain people, particularly the elderly. Nevertheless, I think it's very, very worth trying. We should take baby steps. So the, the first step that one can actually uh, adopt in his life is mild exercise. I'm not asking you to go around in the gym, but walking after you go to the temple for half an hour or go buy your groceries, not using your car, but using your cart, walk half an hour to a grocery that is half an hour away, buy your stuff and come back walking. That is very important because half an hour a day of mild to moderate exercise can prevent diabetes, can lower blood pressure, it can improve the cholesterol profile of patients. So lifestyle modifications are important. The diet, is difficult to be controlled. But nevertheless, there are resources. There are even online resources on teaching people how to cook with, for example, not with ghee, but with olive oil. Use a Mediterranean type of diet. Mm -hmm. So instead of putting ghee in the food, use olive oil. Instead of frying the pakoda, you can have like salads with muli, or you can have, uh, you know, the, the gobi. This is much healthier choice as compared to having fried pakoras or parontas, yeah. so, in, in my opinion. Yeah, once in a blue moon, it's okay, but not every day. Not every day, exactly. Not every day. Because as you said before, the Punjabi community is unique in one thing. Your families are very, very structured, and they are very, very, their family members are very close to each other. So if a, if a father or a mother becomes sick, automatically yeah. I do know mm -hmm that the kids will take care of them. Yeah. So I do, then it becomes an issue for the family because if you have a sick parent, then maybe the wife of the son may not be able to work or the spouse maybe have to be dealing 10 hours a day with a sick husband instead of taking care of the grandkids. So it's not that somebody will die if you have all these diseases, but you'll have a very troublesome life and you may have an impact to your family, to your family members and the, the family dynamics will maybe changing also after somebody is very sick in the family, as you may have already noticed from your... From your yeah, you, you, your you always know certain people uh, within your circles, your friends, or uh, some family member where something like that happened. Either somebody had a stroke or because of diabetic issues, uh, the family got so busy with the, you know, every other week being at the doctor, uh, one operation or the other, and then as the life progresses, you get older, there are more issues. And uh, then what happens is, with those extra issues, uh, you end up spending more productive time waiting for the doctors and making appointments and going through the surgery than doing what needs to be done. I, I can personally help you in terms of prevention in what terms. When I have people at a Punjabi in my practice, and I do have Punjabi people, I am very aggressive in screening them. What do I mean by that? So I'm very aggressive in ordering some tests that can be appropriate for them. And I'm not necessarily talking about a stress test, because if somebody has symptoms, 
then it's reasonable to pursue some workup, like a stress test in Mount Sinai, Queens, here in, in Astoria, or having an echocardiogram. There are new techniques where you can detect disease before it appears, before it's full-blown, I'm saying. So how do you do that, for example? So if I have a middle-aged man that may have elevated blood pressure but without established hypertension, or they have an abnormal cholesterol profile, I may get a CAT scan of the heart. It takes literally 10 seconds. You can screen the heart for calcifications. And if you find no calcifications, everything is okay. Or you have less risk of having disease down the line. Whereas if I find a lot of calcifications, then I may refer for a stress test or an angiogram. I can fix it before it's full-blown bypass. If I find intermediate values, I can put them on medications that can suck the plaque out or that can prevent the, the, the buildup of more plaque. So there is things we can do in, in hospitals like Mount Sinai, Queens, which is right at the corner, and I can help you. Well, well for, for um, the issues about, um, you know, to change the diets, mm -hmm. okay, let's say somebody is every day into the pranthas and mm -hmm. having ghee and stuff like that. But w if, how would you recommend him mm -hmm. to slowly veer off from that diet and go into what kind of diet? Punjabis have a unique characteristics. I have noticed that Punjabis, some of them eat out when they work, but a lot of Punjabis take their food from the house. Yeah. So they put in a Tupperware, they take food with them. And I know that because I was used to live with a, a cab driver in his <laughs> attic. Of his. So I do know that the auntie was waking up at 5 a.m., was cooking for him, and gave him the food to take with him in the cab. So there is hope, because if you eat only outside, it's uh, extremely difficult to, to control your diet. To control the diet, exactly. Because you may say, I'm eating salads. Yeah, but you're putting dressings on the salad, yeah. which can be 15 times worse than the paronta. And paronta, yeah, exactly. But if you're cooking, then, for example, you can start using olive oil. Leave away the ghee. Don't fry the food. Get a lot of, you're having wonderful mulis mm -hmm. and you're eating salads with onions and lettuce. These are very good. Eat gobi, like eat boiled, eat grilled. Don't eat fried and definitely avoid the ghee and the high paronta. Have one paronta or have one ruti with you, but don't have like five rutis that the aunt used to give uncle with him because yeah. they're very rich <laughs> in carbohydrates <laughs> well actually because we are used to you know um that uh, working in the fields are uh, doing heavy work yeah. and after that hungry. that was the diet hungry exactly you, you know you get hungry and then you have to eat and but it's uh, different here because now you don't work on the fields you are sedentary you are sitting you're sitting doesn't matter what because the no. grandpa used to be on the field all yeah. day working yeah. on the fields yeah but, but not anymore. Yeah, that's the thing. Not anymore. Not anymore. So those, those things also need the changes in the habits. What about the exercise part, which can help the people? So exercise is very, very important. From my personal experience, I lost a lot of weight by biking or swimming. But again, you don't have to engage in something that demanding. I just recommend walking. So in my opinion, what I tell my, my own patients, is if you can walk on a fast pace without breaks, meaning you choose a destination, you walk for 25 minutes straight without window shopping, and then you walk back. So if you walk at least half an hour a day at the speed walking, like in a moderate pace, that can help you significantly. If somebody is more motivated, I ask them to either jog, which can be difficult in the winter time, or get a stationary bike at home. It's small, it's cheap if you buy it from Amazon, and you can have it somewhere in your apartment, uh, for your bathroom in the bedroom. So if somebody can wake up in the morning and do some stationary bike, that's also very, very good. The best exercise is swimming, but again, this is difficult to find. It's not in the culture of Punjabis because they don't know how to swim, a lot of them. Exactly, yeah, majority so of them, they, they don't yeah, know how to swim. Yeah, but just yeah. stationary bike, it's yeah. very easy. Yeah, yeah. But then, then again, you know, I, myself, I do swim, my kids swim, but I learned swimming in the village in the mm -hmm. one of those ponds with the um, buffaloes and everything. You know, that, that, that's how we learned how to swim. Uh, the other thing, you know, which, which really can help, which you probably would know, 
beside the darts, beside the exercise. What else on drinking part, because instead of drinking blank, you know, give me, you know, on the ice, on the rocks, oh, no. you know. I think uh, that, is, uh, that is a tough one also. So that is also, I want you to touch on that. That, you alcohol know. is uh, empty calories. So alcohol has a lot of effects. It will not only give you fat, because when you drink alcohol, it goes directly to fat, but it will also raise your blood pressure. Immediately. And immediately. And also, it's very interesting, because I'm dealing with arrhythmias, I have noticed that a lot of people that drink, the next day they develop arrhythmias, named atrial fibrillation, which can give you people strokes. And again, a stroke, it will debilitate you. Mm -hmm. It may not kill you, it will debilitate you. So if you have somebody who is obese, has hypertension, and drinks alcohol, it can trigger sleep apnea at night, because have you noticed that people that drink, they snore a lot at night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is sleep apnea. So alcohol can suppress the sleeping center and people don't get enough oxygen at night. The heart gets a little bit iffy because like, what are you doing? I'm not getting oxygen. So the heart is starting to act up and has arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats. That can give people strokes. So alcohol can not only disorganize the diabetes completely, it can give you fat, it can raise the blood pressure, it can cause arrhythmias. So it's multiple hits. So in, in a way, uh, you know, either way, uh, whether you are diabetic or you drink a lot, both of them, they are going to give you oh. your body more stress and more damaging to your body than just eating That's pranta and stuff exactly, like that, right? Exactly, yes. It's exponential. I don't think it's additive. I don't think that the risk is only additional. I think it's exponential, like in a, in a multiple degree yeah it will exponentially the, the risk will be exponential yeah higher. it's not like one plus one but it is like two times two times two exactly. it's two times four times eight times 64 exactly. times exactly. you know exactly yeah yeah and uh, because we will be running out of time uh, real soon in about i would say in about a minute i want you to uh give out what the people should be looking for when they should be looking to change their habits of eating and getting better heart-wise, what mm -hmm. would you recommend? So I would like you to start exercising. I would like you to avoid the ghee and the fried food. I would like you to go to your doctor often. I would like you to, to go to like specialists, like doctors that can screen for disease even before it happens. So come to a cardiologist, visit the cardiologist, find out if you are prone to developing disease before you have it, that would be all in a nutshell. And avoid drinking. People and technology smoke. is there. Yeah, but they will have new technology. It's right here next to you. Yeah. And I know you don't smoke, so Punjabis don't smoke. Which so is, which is, which is uh, really good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so with that note, uh, the time actually, you know, we are running out of time. It uh, comes to a close. Until next time, good night and good luck.